going through COVID business-wise, no one could take away my knowledge. In fact, I just upped it. I signed up for more classes. Uh, I, I would say if you can up your game in education, it'll help your confidence so much, just mm -hmm. tenfold. Welcome everyone to the Road Less Traveled Show. This is a show about people that were successful in a previous career and left that career to go down a different path. I'm your co-host, Richard Coyne. And I'm your co-host, Bill Zaylor. On today's show, we have Erica Mites. Erica, we're so glad you're with us. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Erica, for being on the Road Less Traveled Show. Well, to start with, can you tell us a little bit about your, your background and how long you were in that line of work? Yeah, absolutely. I have been in the gymnastics industry since... I was about 12 years old and I started coaching or teaching back then in exchange for gymnastics lessons. So I would uh, go and volunteer and at the local club, they would allow me to work out in exchange for that. And I grew from there and never stopped teaching until I pivoted into the real estate just uh, about four years ago. Okay. So long, a long, healthy career in that industry. Right. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, the transition then as you've moved on to the real estate? What uh, what are you doing in the real estate world? So we have a couple of branches on our real estate. We have the multifamily value add uh, acquisition side of, of our real estate firm. And then we also have our passion projects of uh, short term real estate up in the north country of Minnesota. Okay. So that I, I just love it up there. I think everybody should get up there and experience the country. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So uh, years ago, I was on a project in Minnesota, and I might have told you this before, Erica, but uh, um, for those of you who don't know, haven't been paying attention, it gets a little cold in Minnesota in the, in the winter. <laughs> and uh, this project was started in the summer, and I think uh, I think it ended um, probably call it the end of October, and people were like, wow, you escaped before they hit sub-zero. So uh, <laughs> not, not, not below 32, I mean sub-zero. So yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it it's gorgeous. Like October is amazing, amazing yeah. all over the state. And, uh, but once you hit February, it's an interesting time of year, yeah. but I, for me, it's interesting. I have a harder time in March and April and May spending mm -hmm. 30 years out in Silicon Valley and then coming mm -hmm. back. It, mm -hmm. it just, uh, that when, when California is blooming and all the roses are coming in and we're still in gray and cloud cover, it's yeah. that's, that's the hard part for me. Yeah. I, I was, I started a job a number of years ago and then I went to up, I guess the job started called beginning of April, mm -hmm. uh, mid beginning, mid of April. Anyway, I, I at the time was living in Atlanta and in April, mid April, it's in summer already in, in Atlanta. So I went up to, to Connecticut and I was just struck by the contrast. Um, you know, there are no leaves on trees. All the, you know, there's a lot of rock, and the, and the rocks are gray uh, in that area. Just the, just the whatever natural rock formations. And it was amazing how kind of, kind of struck me as really wow. This is just such a contrast. And I, it was only almost struck me as a little gloomy too. So yeah. But anyway, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So Erica, as you uh, think about your. You know, perhaps your gymnastics days as as as, a, as an athlete, or perhaps mm -hmm. you know, and other things that you do in that field, uh, you know, coaching or whatever. Is there a funny story you can share? Something that happens to you along the way? You know, I was thinking about that, and I would say one of the the funniest stories is a parent came up to me while I was coaching on the floor. Is she, of course, they weren't on the floor, but they came up to me after the meet, and they go, "Are you okay?" And I said, yeah, why? We just, we just did great. Like we rocked, like we won everything. It was amazing. And she goes, well, this other parent from another gym said, why, why is your coach so angry? And I said, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm elated. Are you kidding? These kids did wonderfully. And they go, your face, you just look like you have just the worst angry face ever. And I went, Oh, how sad is that? <laughs> so, so ever since then, I've been very conscious of like my face because everybody's watching and now it's even right. heightened more because there's so many cameras now, but yeah. I try to stay conscious of my face and uh, those poor kids, like imagine how those kids felt if the parents felt like yeah. that, but it was a great story. It was a great learning 
experience also that uh, people are watching you. People are watching all the time. Yeah, I mean, you know, it sounds like somebody mistook intensity for <laughs> for anger, and that's certainly not the case. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, wow. I know, and my kids rocked. It was awesome. <laughs> Nice. You see me when we lose. I mean, it's, maybe this is I, angry. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's excellent. Well, Eric, what was a, um, a deciding factor um, to get you to transition from your previous career into the real estate world? Was there one thing or we kind of build over time or how did that transpire? I think it built over time. I've always had a, I've always had a thing for real estate. And um, in 2015 is when I bought my first single family rental. Mm -hmm. And I've just loved it. I I see the path of it. I see the the lifestyle of it that I want to to enhance even more. And that's that's my goal. Is really um, I kind kind of call myself like a cash flow warrior. And that's really my goals right now. Is you know my my gymnastics club is still running in San Francisco and we have an incredible team that does that. And then we're building this real estate firm and it's, I, I feel blessed to have the gift of entrepreneurialism mm -hmm. and, and to find team, team uh, players that want to build these companies. It's, it's fascinating. It's awesome to watch them grow. And in gymnastics, I give a lot of, um, a lot of my staff, a lot of leeway to be creative and learn and, and try to implement some things. And provided it doesn't take too much cash flow or put, put it, the company at any high level of risk, I let them take those risks within the company. And, and it's mm -hmm. almost like a laboratory for them. Mm -hmm. And I, I encourage it. I think uh, everyone should learn about business and understand it and understand the ins and outs. And, and uh, if I can help facilitate that in any way, I think it's amazing. Thanks. Excellent. Nice. Yeah. Erica, as you, um, as you started making the shift, you mentioned that in 2015, the first one you bought was a, a single family. Is that right? Yep. It was like an investment property, that kind of thing. Got it. Yep. And you've, you've obviously gone for there. Um, <clears throat> but, but think to the early days, um, mm -hmm. were there some obstacles you had to overcome initially as you kind of made that shift or started, you know, building a, a, essentially a side, side hustle or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it for uh, in real estate? Absolutely. So I, I would say one of the biggest obstacles is one, I transitioned from uh, California to Minnesota mm -hmm. and I had no contacts. I, did, I had my family, but my family, no one is in real estate. My previous generation, my grandparents were in real estate, but I, my grandmother passed when I was three and my grandfather, I was in California and I didn't have this connection yet. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother actually owned a construction company in the 70s, wow. in the early 70s, which is unheard of for a woman. Mm -hmm. And she she built low she built low income housing in North Minneapolis and uh, really bonded with that community. And they really took care of her. She would be out in the bulldozers and she would be doing all that good stuff. And then at night have to come home and be a senator's wife. So that's what, oh, that, wow. that was her journey. And, um, uh, and then my, fa my grandfather also, besides being, um, the state senator, he, he also was a realtor. Okay. So, but I, I unfortunately didn't get to like pick their brains or ride on their coattails, but I get to live vicariously a little bit from them. But I would also say one of the biggest obstacles is, um, when you're, when you're going into a new startup, especially a capital intensive startup, mm -hmm. it is really interesting to want to fall back on what you know and mm -hmm. go back into it and open another gym. Cause you know it and you understand it and it's easy. You know how to make a money, make the money quicker and things like that. So I, I give myself kudos for not, <laughs> for staying the path and not just, keep doing what I know and to really branch out and try something new. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, yeah. on, on the new path then, Erica, what, um, can you look back? What was one of your first victories as you transitioned in the real estate world uh, on a full-time basis? Yeah. One of our, well, turning all the single family rentals, that was fun and mm -hmm. um, giving us some cash invest passively. That was a big victory. I didn't look at it as a victory as I did it, but now 
you know, asking people to invest in, in deals, I think being a passive investor is massive because you know the emotion that goes behind it when mm-hmm. they're handing you fifty, hundred thousand dollars. And to to have that insight on how they're feeling, I think is very valuable. Um, I think uh, my, but a little bit more fun was my first GP position. I was, um, excuse me, <clears throat> I had, they had five days to close and they called me at the last minute to raise money. Wow. I, I raised- There's no pressure. <laughs> yeah, I, I raised a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, of money for them and um, got a GP position and a check in the mail. So that was fun. Nice. Excellent. Right. So if people don't understand the uh, entire syndicated structure, what Eric is referring to is the GP. That's the general partner that runs the project. The other side of the equation is the limited partner, the LP, which invests passively and gets a return for the general partner or part of the managing team on that. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, when, when we're doing projects, we have money in each of our deals and our the money that we invest in the deal sits on the LP side. So essentially, we're both LP and GP. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, but again, obviously, uh, skin in the game is, is uh, our like investors like to see that we have skin in the game. So, yeah, very important part. Um, so, Erica, as you as you think now to some of what you've been doing in the real estate world, mm-hmm. uh, is there is there a funny story you can share? Ah, oh, funny, 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 funny. funny. Mm. I would say uh, Todd Dexheimer, one of my mentors, we run a North Star Real Estate Conference together and mm-hmm. he gently forced me to get on stage because I'm always the kind of gal that wants to sit in the background, do everything, get everything done, direct the scene. And... Uh, He's like, you're going to tell your story. You're scheduled at this time, at this time. I'm like, okay, yes, ma- yes, I will do it. So he really pushed me out of my comfort zone and pushed me up on stage. And it was great. It was a great experience. And it wasn't even that bad. I enjoyed it. I really, really did. So thank you, Todd. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Todd's a, Todd's a friend of ours. Actually, he was, uh, I think Todd was our very first guest. The first podcast. one, yeah. First, yeah. first yeah. guest. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Good. Uh. Excellent. Well, um, as you continue to expand and push your comfort zone on that, Erica, where are you today in your in your real estate journey? So I have, I mean, we're in the middle of a raise right now that we're working on with a, a wonderful group of people. And we are also working on a tiny home development in mm-hmm. Arizona. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the past, the Airbnbs, they're pretty much set and they kind of have their own team that runs them. And uh, nice. yeah, so I, I find that it's, it's fun. You know, the multifamily has a really clear path and the tiny home development challenges me a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So that's just uh, more infrastructure and, you know, mm-hmm. getting through cities and things like that. But there's so much need for affordable housing out there and it doesn't really seem to matter what state it's in that, mm-hmm. uh, we um, started this project and another city in Arizona that's neighboring has already called us to do another tiny home village nice. in their city as well. Nice. So that was very, really, really interesting. Right. So, so uh, Erica, is, is it the intent of the tiny home? Is that uh, affordable housing or is it, is it kind of vacation attraction? Uh, uh, we're doing it for housing and oh, wow. it's part cool. of a master plan for okay. um a project that's going to have multifamily and single family homes on it. Okay. okay. And it's supposed to be in the, the limelight of a sustainability build. Mm-hmm. So it's really recycling water and using their gray water to water their plants, that, that kind of thing. Um, it's with a gentleman whose family has uh, about 10,000 acres out in Arizona and they are carving out a piece of it to build a, a, master plan if you will Mm -hmm. but the master plan also integrates grass-fed beef and equestrian centers and vineyards Mm -hmm. and so it's a a little unique and uh, i leave friday to go see it for the first time so i'm excited oh nice that's really cool actually you know again we uh we all know we're uh millions of units short in this country of actual having enough housing for people 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's crazy. It was a, a glut, you know, whatever years ago, not too long ago, uh, but now we're, we're 5 million units short. And that, I, I don't see that changing, you know, certainly, um, you know, it's good for us in the, um, in a way that, that, that creates demand for apartments, which is our business, but at some point in time, you know, definitely we want to make sure, you know, do our part to see what we can do to help uh, people mm-hmm. have, have appropriate safe housing. And, you know, that kind of a, a initiative that you're part of is very cool. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good deal. Um, so, Erica, as you as you think about and kind of look at look at your you know gymnastics world and your your real estate world, is there something that you do to give back that you can share with with uh, our audience? Yes, I I actually right now do a lot of consulting. So um, I do some business consulting with local gyms. I helped um, a gal open up her gym, and I try to do it where you get paid, and and it just it doesn't feel right for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just enjoy it. I enjoy watching people start their, you know, just come out of their shell and be that, that fear just kind of dissipates and they are able to open up their selves to vulnerability of opening a business and, and understanding that it, it takes a lot of work. It It's not, mm-hmm. it's not just a, a simple, a simple thing, but it's also not that difficult if you have the commitment to it. Nice. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Well, is there um, is there something you recently implemented in your real estate business that's helped you scale to grow faster on that side? Yes, I hired a marketing director, and um, she is also my assistant, and that was a massive play for us in our company. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. um, really helps keep me focused on networking. And she also pushes me out of my comfort zone, which mm-hmm. is a, a wonderful gap filler. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, if it, as you, as you add on more employees to your, to your firm, you just, you, ha- you always have to show up every day. You have a purpose. You, you're really, your success is an obligation. Mm-hmm. And I look at that as a positive thing. And, um, so I, I enjoy it and that's, that's kind of where we're going is we hired people and that's what got us, got our momentum and our traction. That's great. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's great. Definitely. Yeah, we, we talk about it all the time that, uh, you know, people, when you start out, you know, you want to do all aspects of it and, it, and it's good in a way too, cause you need to learn. So, you know, know what needs to be done, but at some point there's people who are going to do one job better than you, or you have a better higher, higher and best use of your time. Correct. I mean, you yeah. can't be doing the, the $7 an hour work when you could be out, you know, looking at deals, underwriting them, talking to investors, whatever your specialty happens to be. There's, you know, that working in your business or on your business is a, mm-hmm. there's a, a fine line there. That's true. It's so true. Yeah. So Erica, as you think to, uh, back, what, uh, what advice would you share uh, with somebody who's making, uh, considering making a path change to go in a different direction themselves? Educate. It's mm-hmm. massive. It's mm-hmm. massive. And, you know, going through COVID with my gymnastics club and in California of all places mm-hmm. where they shut us down for 18 months, you get to do a lot of self-reflecting. And the one thing that I realized that, and would they say it in every book and in, in every, you know, business book, no one can take away your knowledge. Mm-hmm. And it's the truth in, in going through COVID business wise, no one could take away my knowledge. In fact, I just upped it. I just did. I signed up for more classes. Uh, Harvard has a, a wonderful real estate investment Um an enterprise program there. And it is amazing. So I I would say if you can up your game in education, it'll help your confidence so much, just Mm -hmm. tenfold. Yeah. We're huge believers in education, you know, which is why we do this show, you know, to, to help share knowledge with others. We also run a couple of uh, monthly meetings for the purpose of helping others, you know, learn and, uh, you know, some of it's, some of it's, it's the basics, but at the same point in time, we cover advanced topics as well. And, you know, and, and it, you know, and, and part of the reason why we do that is to give back. And part of the reason we do that also is that a lot of people were very generous with us early on with some ideas, mm-hmm. thoughts, and, you know, pointers in, in the right direction as, as, uh, as we got ourselves started. So we, you know, we think it's important to, to share that knowledge and, um, you know, 
great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think too that the even the fundamentals, even as you advance, the fundamentals are always good to reflect on. Yeah. They're always good, good to remember. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Master those. <laughs> well, Eric, what's the uh, best way for our uh, listeners to be able to reach out and learn more about what you're involved in? Yeah, we have, um, we have a website, maroonandgoldre.com, or they can email me personally at erica at maroonandgoldre.com, uh, or they can text me. I love text messages. So easy. 510-557-0727. Great. And we'll put the uh, links below in the show notes. Well, Eric, we want to really thank you for being on the Road Less Travel show today. Really enjoyed the conversation and wish you continued success. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. We'd like to thank you, Erica. Uh, certainly, we also want to thank our listeners. Please continue to give us a five-star rating so we can bring you more great content like our show today with Erica Mites. We'd also like to thank Park Capital Partners that sponsors the show and remind everybody about two important initiatives that we are doing at Park Capital Partners. First of all, we have the Park Capital uh, Value Add Fund that is a 506C fund is open today, taking accredited investors. Um, and we also have the Park Capital Partners Foundation. That's something that Bill and I created last year. It is a 501c3 nonprofit. And the way that works is that uh, Park Capital Partners funds the operations of the, of the foundation. So we all the money donated can go to do its best work, which is to help others. Uh, secondly, we also uh, donate a portion of our Park Capital Partners profits to the foundation. We also donate personally. And finally, when an investor invests with us, uh, in one of our projects, we make a donation to honor that investor to a charity of their choice from a pre-selected list of 15. So please reach out, say hello to uh, to Bill and myself. We're available and uh, happy to have a conversation with you anytime. And remember folks, the road less traveled may be calling you. We recommend that you listen and take action. Thanks for joining. <music>